She said, husband, this thing's different. She said, God's in this thing, and people are getting in that pool. They're getting healed. The blind are seeing, the lame are walking. Cancers are coming off of people's bodies. Leprosy is being made whole. God's in this thing. God's in it. I said, hallelujah. God is not a respected person. Everybody in the eyes of God is just exactly alike. The Bible said, humble yourself and the Lord will walk with you. Humble yourself and his praises will cheer you. He won't walk with a proud and with a scorn. You've got to humble yourself if you walk with God. This is Juanita Cole. The following message was preached by the late evangelist Jack Cole during the Great Gospel Tent Revival in 1955. By the use of our imagination and tape recording, let's step back into the past for a few minutes and join the crowd of over 10,000 as they listen to the evangelist Jack Cole. You know, lots of times I've went from Los Angeles to Catalina. One time on my way back to Los Angeles, a storm arose. Them little boats we were riding on, it looks like every wave we went over would be our last. Seemed like them little boats went right straight up in the air almost. Then down over a wave, and I thought this will be the last wave. I saw grown men and grown women get out and pray and cry. But all of a sudden, that boat sailed into the harbor of Los Angeles. And when it did, the waters become just as still and as calm and as quiet as could be. And as we sailed along there on those still waters, I noticed everybody had their head bowed in reverence to God for bringing them through the storm. And that old song began to ring in my heart. I've anchored my soul in that haven of rest. I'm not going to sail those wild seas anymore. Out under the tempest may sweep, but thank God I'm safe in Jesus. How many feel safe in him tonight? Say amen. Sing it again. I've answered my soul in the heaven of rest. I'll say, though I'll see. When doctors said I couldn't live and I weighed 134 pounds, Jesus walked into the house trailer where I was and laid his hand upon me and delivered me from tropical malaria of the worst kind. I gained over 100 pounds in one year. Doctors said there was no hope, but Jesus said there is hope. When I was Sitting in the middle of that bed at 2 o'clock in the morning, I said, go ahead and kill me. I'm yours anyhow. When you get done, I'll come forth like gold. Because I know that you still live because I feel you in my soul. How many feel him tonight? Say amen. Sing that chorus with me, will you? Go down, lady, Come forth as gold, for I know that he still lives, for I feel him in my soul. I'm going to preach for a few minutes tonight on curing the incurable. Thank God when man is gone as far as he can go, 
there is one that can heal you by the name of Jesus. When doctors have shook their heads and folded their hands, and hospitals say there is no hope, thank God there is hope in Jesus Christ. You will get well. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me. I'm reading a portion of Scripture found in St. Mark, the ninth chapter. I'm beginning to read with the 20th verse. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the Spirit teareth him. And he fell on the ground, wallowing and foaming. And he asked his father, How long ago is this since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft times it has cast him into the fire and into the water to try to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, but if thou canst do anything, but if thou canst do anything, oh, those words of doubt, thank God my Jesus can always do something. I said my Jesus can always do something. If thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe it. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Everything is possible. Everything is possible if thou canst believe. All things are possible to them that believe. Hallelujah. Amen. That man straightway cried out and said, Lord, help thou my unbelief. And Jesus just spoke the words. And the demon spirits came out of that child. And it fell on the ground watering and foaming. Before that, but this time it fell on the ground as one dead. Until the people said it is dead. But Jesus reached down and took that child by the hand and lifted it up. Amen. 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 If thou canst believe, all things are possible. If thou canst believe, listen. Take the whole Bible and tear every scripture out of the Bible on healing. Do away with every one of them. And that one scripture is enough for me to preach healing from now until Jesus comes. He said, if thou canst believe, anything's possible. He said, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you'd move a mountain. He didn't say, if you have faith like a mountain, you'd move a grain of mustard seed. But he said, if you had faith like a little bitty grain of mustard seed, you'd move a mountain. Jesus didn't cast mountains into the Mediterranean, into the Sea of Galilee, but I believe he cast old tumors and cancers and leprosy and blind eyes away from people never to come back on them again. And that same Jesus is here tonight to heal your sick body and deliver you if you believe in him. I want you to see a picture with me. Jesus was on top of the Mount of Transfiguration. There his garments, Matthew said, became as the noonday sun. He shone so bright. There was Peter and James and John up there with him. Peter got so happy, he said, Lord, let's just build three tabernacles and stay up here. Let's don't ever go down. Let's build one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. And let's always stay on top of this mountain and just worship God. But while they was on top of the mountain, seeing Jesus and all of his beauty and all of his glory and all of his loveliness, down in the valley there was sin, there was sickness, there was sorrow, and there was suffering. They brought a poor demon-possessed boy to the disciples and said, let's see you cast the devils out of this one. Them poor disciples had no doubt prayed and screamed until they were almost hoarse. But the boy was just like he always was. You know, there was all the old religious leaders there to make fun. There was some Methodists and some Baptists and some Lutherans and some Pentecostals and some assembly of God 
poking fun, making fun, asking puzzling questions. Why don't you cast the devils out of that one? Let's see you heal that one. That's a hard one. Do something with that one. It wasn't safe to make fun when Jesus was around. He always had too good of an answer for him. Brother, it's not safe to make fun around this tent when Jesus is around. He's got too good of an answer for you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I'd say over a thousand people raised their hands last night that they come under this tent skeptical, doubting. But when service was over, they raised their hands and said, we've seen enough tonight that we believe God. And most of them was down here at the altar giving their hearts to God. Amen. Amen. But Jesus was away now, and they wanted to make fun. They wanted to poke fun. And all of a sudden, somebody looked up and said, here comes Jesus down off of the mountain. Somebody said, quick, get that boy to Jesus. Let me tell you something tonight. If you're sick in your body, all you have to do is get your old sick body to Jesus. The Bible didn't say all that came to Jack Cole. The Bible didn't say all that got to Brother Roberts. The Bible didn't say all that met Brother Brandon. The Bible didn't say all that met the Apostle Peter. But the Bible said all that came to Jesus was healed. Everybody that came to Jesus was healed. If you're sick in your body tonight and you'll get your old sick body to Jesus, you'll get well. I don't care what you got. I don't care if you've got a cancer as big as a tub on you and God lays his hand on that old cancer. Thank God that old cancer will have to melt and go. I don't care how long them eyes have been blind. When God speaks the word, them old blind eyes will fly open. I don't care how long you've been deaf and couldn't hear. When God touches those ears, those ears are healed and they'll hear again. Hallelujah! He is a healer. He is the only healer. I was in Kansas City having an old wheelchair case night one night and praying for all of those in wheelchairs. As fast as I was laying hands on them, they was coming out of their wheelchairs and shouting the victory and pushing their wheelchairs out from and under the tent. I finally laid my hands upon one sister's head, and I couldn't feel anything. It was just like touching that post there. I just took my hands off and went to the next person. There's some people I pray for and some people I pray with. Amen. Who God gives a lot to, he expects a lot of. You people that claim to have the Holy Ghost, God expects more out of you than somebody that never even heard about a born-again experience. Somebody said, Brother Co, I've heard you preach that you could pray the prayer of faith to set me free. I can if you're a sinner and an unbeliever, I can pray the prayer of faith to set you free. But if you're a baptized Christian walking with God, you need to clean up your own life before God will heal you. The Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, which is the unbeliever, and they shall recover. But there's another scripture in James 5, 14 and 15, says any sick among you, that's talking to Christians, preachers, deacons, elders, Sunday school teachers, that know how to live for God and won't do it. Amen. God said any sick among you, let the afflicted pray. You know what the word afflicted there means out of the Greek? Let the backslidden pray. Let those that's got cold and they're sold and dried up pray. Let them pray. And after they pray through, let them call the elders of the church and let the elders anoint them with oil. 
and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. And if they've committed any sins, it shall be forgiven them. God won't heal you to go out and glorify the devil. I asked a girl one night on crutches, I said, if I pray for you and God heals you, what are you going to do? And she said, boy, I said, I'm going to a dance. I haven't been to one in months and said, I'm going to a dance. I said, listen to me, sis, if you go to a dance, you'll go on those crutches because I wouldn't pray for you and waste my prayer on you. The Bible said when Jesus healed him, he said, go and sin no more unless the worst thing come upon you. Hallelujah. I know God will heal sinners. He healed me when I was a sinner. Jesus said to the man on the bed, they let down through the roof, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. They said, who is this that can forgive sin?" And he said, which is the easiest to say? Thy sins be forgiven thee, arise, take up your bed and walk. I'm going to do both of them anyhow. So he said to the man, arise, take up your bed and walk. And the man jumped up and picked up his bed and went and glorified God. Hallelujah! And I prayed for this little woman and I took my hands off of her and went to the next one. She turned to the woman next to her in the other wheelchair the other way, and said, well, I've tried them all now. I've tried Branham and Roberts and Freeman and Jackson and Wicks and Vineyard, and the only one I had left was Coe. They told me he was pretty good, so I've tried him now, I've tried them all. I turned around to her and I said, you child of the devil? She said, what? said, I'm Pentecost. I said, you're plenty crossed. I said, you're plenty crossed. There's a difference between being Pentecost and plenty crossed. I said, you're a child of unbelief. I said, why have you wasted God's money running all over the country after man? Why haven't you run to God? My Bible doesn't say run to Jack Cole. My Bible didn't say run to Brother Branham. It said run to Jesus. It said go to Jesus. I believe that men that have faith, men that have Jesus in them like Brother Roberts and Brother Branham and all these men and women of God that have faith in them to pray for the sick, I believe they have faith to see the work of God done. But I think when you go to them, you ought not go to them, but go to Jesus that was within them. Because the Bible said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And I said, God will heal you if you just come to Jesus and not to me. She looked at me and she said, do you mean to tell me I'm not saved? I said, that's exactly what I mean to tell you. She said, you mean to tell me that I wouldn't go to heaven? I said, that's exactly what I mean to tell you. I said, you're a child of unbelief. The Bible said, if you're like the waves of the sea, don't expect anything. She began to cry. She said, would you pray for me one more time? I said, if you'll believe God, I will. I said, ask God to forgive you for the way you've lived for the unbelief that's in your heart. This man was in the same condition. He said, God, I saw your disciples try to heal my boy. Now let's see what you can do. That's what he said. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible if you can believe. He shoved it back on the man again. It's not through any good works that you have done, lest you should boast, but through the power of God that you get anything tonight. Pray for me. One more time, I'll repent and try to touch God. And I laid my hands back on her, and she put her hands up and said, God, forgive me. 
Jesus, search my heart. God, I'm sorry that I've did the things I've done. God, if you'll just forgive me. And while she was praying, the glory of the Lord came over. The power of God hit her, and out of that chair she come and started running around that tent with her hands in the air, praising and magnifying God. She told me after service, why didn't I touch God all the time? It was so easy to touch him. Amen. You don't work faith up. Faith is not mental or psychic. It don't begin in your head. It begins in your heart. But brother, listen, let me tell you something. If you'll put your trust in Jesus Christ and take it to him, he'll heal you. I don't care what you have. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Somebody said, show me something. I'm from Missouri. I want to see. Show me. Show me something. You got it backwards. The Bible said if you believe, you'll get to see. The Bible said if you believe, you'll get to see. Hallelujah. One preacher called me up here a while back and said, I'm going to meet you down at the corner of the courthouse with a bottle of carbolic acid. I want you to drink the first half, and if it don't hurt you, I'll drink the second half. I said, you idiot, meet yourself and drink both halves. I'm not coming. Why, he said, preacher, the Bible said if you, if you drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt you. I said, sure it does, if you do it. But it didn't tell you to go around and do it. It didn't tell you to go around and do it. I believe the God I serve, if I drank poison by mistake, I believe the God I serve is big enough to heal me and take care of me. One preacher called me up and said, I'm going to bring a bunch of rattlesnakes to church. And I want you to handle them said, what are you going to do when I bring them up on the platform? I said, if I know which one you are, I'll go off of the back of the platform. He said, well, the Bible said they shall take up serpents so they won't hurt them. I believe if I was like Paul on the Isle of Melita, gathering up sticks to build a fire, and a snake come out and bit me, I believe I could shake it off and God would heal me and deliver me, but God didn't tell me to go around and handle snakes for anybody. Somebody said he died for my sins. Brother, he didn't only die for my sins, but he died for my sicknesses. He said, by my stripes ye are healed. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. He is not only my Savior, but he is my healer. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and by those stripes I am healed. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. There's not a single one of you preachers got any business sitting here tonight sick in your body. God has paid the price to heal every one of you. God's paid the price to take the cancer out of your stomach. God's paid the price to heal you of your ruptures and your tumors. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. I get so sick and tired of hearing Christians pray that. Lord, let your will be done. It's God's will to heal everybody in here. I don't want no preacher coming in standing over my bed if I was dying. Anoint me with oil and say, now, Lord, if it be your will, heal our brother. And if it's not, he's liable to... Wait a minute. Somebody said, wait a minute. You don't know the scripture. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Lord, let your will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. I agree with that. But there's no cancers in heaven. There's no blind eyes in heaven. There's no tumors in heaven. There's no arthritis in heaven. And Jesus said, pray after this manner. Make everybody on earth just like they are in heaven. Let your will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. Make them well on earth. I prayed for a Baptist preacher that was dean of Whalen Bible College. God filled him with the Holy Ghost. And he came to me afterwards and he said, Brother Cole, if I'd have knew what I knew now, my wife would be alive today. He said, my wife was dying with cancer. I hauled her all over the country. To every place I hauled her to be prayed for, every preacher would anoint her and say, now, Lord, if it be your will, heal our sister. And if it's not, Lord, then give us grace to bear it and take her home. And he said, the last place I took her, that's prayer they prayed was, God, if it be your will, heal our sister. And if it's not, take her home. And he said he took her home. But he said, little did I realize there was men alive today clothed with the power of God that could walk into a death room and say to a person on the deathbed, Satan, get your hands off of this person. I bind you in the name of Jesus, you foul devil. I command you to leave this room and for this person to arise and walk. Somebody said to you, Wait a minute now, it sounds like you heal the sick. No. I just pray and say, Lord, heal the sister. Yeah. Devil, get your hands off of her. And God said, Devil, you heard what he said. Get your hands off of her. And he gets them off. I say, you foul cancer, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Depart from this body. God said, Devil, you heard him. Get going. God's give me power and authority. And he gave it to you. The only trouble is most of you never woke up to find out where you're living at and who you are and what you can do. It's God's will to heal you. It's God's will to heal you. I said it's God's will to heal you. I said it's God's will to heal you. If your little child got hurt, would you say, well, it's good enough for you? I'm glad you got hurt. Of course you would. You'd grab him up in your arms and kiss his tears away. Amen. you do everything human in your power, Mother, to take care of that cut, wouldn't you? If you being evil know how to give good gifts, how much more will Jesus give to them that ask of him? Two million Israelites left the Egyptian bondage afoot. And the Bible said there wasn't a feeble of them. Amen. Boy, if you tried to transport a city of two million today, you'd have to get every crutch and every wheelbarrow and every car and everything else to get them out of town. But the Bible said two million of them Israelites walked across the Red Sea of foot. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. They must have had a healing service that wouldn't quit just before they left the Egyptian bondage. Somebody said, when do you think God healed them all? I kind of like to think when they eat the Passover and took the bread because he said the bread was the children's healing. And brother, as they eat the bread, hallelujah, they got healed. Uh, the old lame legs was made straight. Uh, oh, glory to God, the old blind eyes saw. The old feeble bodies got up and began to move. Uh, and two million Israelites crossed the Red Sea of foot. Hallelujah. I was in a meeting in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and a woman by the name of Mrs. A.L. Harley was bound to a wheelchair. And I was up preaching away, and she was back. She looked at me, and finally I began to sing Job's God is True. And she stopped me, and she said, Do you believe what you're singing? I said, I sure do, or I wouldn't be singing it. She said, Do you believe God can get me out of this wheelchair? I said, I know he can. Well, she said, Come on down here and do whatever you've got to do to get me out of it. Well, I said, you just get up and do whatever you got to do to get at it. 
She said, well, you mean just get up? I said, yeah. She said, just like that? I said, yeah, just like that. She said, you mean to tell me that uh-uh? I said, just like that. She said, well, here I come, and up she got. I said, now walk over here to me. And she walked over to me, and I laid my hands on her head. And she started walking all over that church, all over that tent. Service was over. Her daughter took her back home, 12 years old. They went back to Dawson, Oklahoma, and the daughter got on the phone, called her brother that was working nights, said, brother, come home. Said, mama's walking. He said, but she can't walk. She hadn't got any muscles in her legs. She said, I, I know, but brother, she is walking. Brother said, how did it happen? Said, they took her to the Holy Roller meeting. Said, that preacher just said, get out of that chair. And said, she got up and started walking. Brother said, she can't walk. She said, she is. Said, come and see. The brother went rushing home and rushed into the house, and there was his mother walking. He run and grabbed the telephone, called the doctor, and he said, come quick, said, Mama's walking. Doctor said, Mama, who's walking? Said, Mrs. L. Harley, she's walking. Doctor said, she can't walk. He said, that's what I said, but she is anyhow. Doctor said, how did it happen? Also, they took her to that whole lower tent and said, that preacher gave her a shot and said, she's walking. That doctor come rushing out of the house, sit her down, got out his little rubber hammer and hit her on the knees and hit her on the arm. And he said, now tell me to the best of your ability, Mrs. Harley, exactly what happened. She said, well, I was sitting in the chair and said he was singing. And I asked him if he believed what he was saying and he said he did. And I asked him if he believed that God... She said, well, I was sitting in the chair and said he was singing. And I asked him if he believed what he was saying, and he said he did. And I asked him if he believed that God could heal me, and he said he did. He said, what did he do then? Said He said, for me to, said I said to him, well, come down and do whatever you got to do to get me out of this wheelchair. And said, he said, do whatever you got to do to get out of it. And she said, I said, just like that, just get up. And he said, yes. And said, I got up. And I started walking. He said, what happened then? She said, he laid my, his hand on my head. He said, did you feel a needle go in you? No, I don't think so. It didn't hurt. What did you feel? I don't know, just a funny tingling went all over me. Went right down here and circled around here and then went down through my legs. Said, I never felt so good. Said, said, it was really wonderful. He said, that's where they put the needle in you. Said, that's where they give you the shot. Her boy spoke up and said, well, why haven't you given her a shot like that? Well, he said, I don't know what they give her. When the doctor went to leave, he said, now you keep watching her close, because any time that'll wear off. And when it does, she's liable to fall and hurt herself. But she's still walking, and it never has wore off. What I'm trying to tell you is if Pentecost don't take this thing, God will give it to somebody who will take it. I said, God will give it to somebody who will take it. Amen. I was in a meeting out in California in Castro Valley of a man living over on Armory Street. Let me give you his name. Ralph C. Minor, Baptist preacher, laying up in the hospital, dying with heart trouble. Had nine ruptures across his stomach and had on a great big belt to hold them ruptures in place. He lived at 3303A, apartment A, Army Street, San Francisco, California laying in the hospital listening to me preach on the radio. He got his Bible down and he began to go with me to see if it was scriptural. After he checked the Word of God, he said, you know, he said, God does heal today. So 
So when his wife come that afternoon, he made up his mind that he was going to ask her to bring his clothes back that night. He was going to the pit meet. Doctor told him he couldn't get out of bed or he'd drop dead with his heart. That's how bad his heart was. But he was coming anyhow. His wife come that afternoon and he told her, he said, Honey, I've been listening to a fellow over the radio. He said, He sure does make a lot of noise and they holler and yell. But he said, I checked every scripture he gave and he said, It checks right. And he said, God still heals the sick today. And she said, Well, I believe God can do anything. Oh, everybody does that. The devil even believes that. Yeah, the devil believes God can do anything. He believes in God and trembles. You got to believe God will do anything. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. He'll do it for you. He said, Now, when you come back tonight, said, Bring your clothes. She said, What do we want your clothes for? He said, I'm leaving this hospital. He said, Now, the doctors or nurses won't let me out. But said, You bring my clothes. He said, I'm going to that tent meeting. She said, but you can't go to the tent meeting. He said, yeah, I'm going. And he argued with her. Finally, when she got ready to leave and visit and hours was over, she went out and she asked the nurse. She said, how is he? The nurse said, well, about the same. She said, he seems like he's out of his head. Said he's talking about going to some kind of a tent meeting somewhere. The nurse said, well, it's probably some of the things we've been giving him. So she went on and went home and come back that night, 7.30 for visiting hours, and he said, where's my clothes? She said, oh, that's all right. I said, I didn't bring them. I said, I'll bring them. Whenever you get better, then we'll go to church together. The pastor was just asking about you the other day. He said, I'm not uh, talking about going to church where I've been going to church. I want to go to that tent meeting down there where them people are hollering and yelling. I'm going to get well. He tried to get her to go back and get his clothes, but she wouldn't do it. Finally, she left early that evening because she said she didn't want to stay there and argue with him. When the lights was out, he said, I haven't got any clothes, Lord, to go, but he said, I'm going some way. So he got up and he took the sheet and he wrapped it around him and made him a cape out of the sheet. And he crawled down the fire escape and got in the back of a taxi cab and pushed his finger in the taxi cab driver's back and said, take me to Castor Valley. The cab driver said he thought he had a gun in his back and it was a hijack. He said he didn't even look around. He just started the cab and headed for Castor Valley. He pulled up in front of the tent and got out of the back of the cab and said, wait here, I'll get your money for bringing me. Didn't even have any money. He walked up to one of the ushers and said, loan me four and a half. And the usher said he looked at him and he said, how did I know? He said, I thought maybe it was an angel or a saint of God that had come back to life again. He said, I didn't question him. I just got the four and a half and handed it to him. He went back out and handed it to the fellow in the cab. Came back walking under that tent with that sheet wrapped around him. You can imagine what I thought. I thought, what's come in now? Because you get everything in these tent meetings, just anything and everything. I thought this must be a Moses or Elijah or somebody else. When the healing line formed, he got in the healing line. And when I come to him, I said, what's the matter with you? And he told me then that he'd run off from the hospital and came down the fire escape. I laid my hands on him and prayed for that old heart trouble and the power of God hit him. And he started running. I'll never forget it. Around and around that tent he run with that old sheet just waving in the air praising and magnifying God and blessing God. God completely healed him of the heart trouble. He went back in the van and took that old belt off that was holding them ruptures and could not find any of the ruptures. God took every one of the ruptures off of his body. Brother, the God I serve, if you can believe, he can do anything. My God can do anything. My God can do anything. He said, all things are possible to them that believe. How many believe that tonight? Raise your hand. Raise both hands and praise God for faith in God. 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 Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Stand with me and sing, Lord, I believe. How many believe tonight? He can make the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear. 
How many believe he's walking up and down these aisles tonight? He's here to smite that cancer, to heal that tumor, to open blind eyes. Do you believe he's here? Put your hand up if you believe he's here. If you really believe he's here. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All things are possible. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All things possible. believe he's here to heal you don't matter what denomination you belong to but if you believe in him and put your faith in him he'll make you whole tonight how many believe that he didn't say all that any denomination came to him but he said all that came to Jesus was he how many want to take your old sick body to Jesus tonight how many want to walk out of this tent delivered by the power of God delivered 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 Jesus is here. Close your eyes. Worship him. Will you do it?